Welcome to Two Small Biz Guys, Biz Buds. Stay tuned for an exciting small business discussion that will empower your business. And don't forget your free download of Ray's Crib Notes. Now, on with the show. Hi, and welcome to another edition of Biz Buzz with Ray and Zen, brought to you by Two Small Biz Guys and sponsored by Pro Peer Advisory Boards. Ray, how are you doing today? I am super. How are you doing? I'm ready for an interview. You, you are? I am. Oh, yes, because you're interviewish. Yes, I, I'm at oh, oh, yeah. uh, So, with, obviously, the topic for today is going to be about interviews, their importance, how they've grown and, and changed. Uh, over the years, what worked in the early aughts no longer works now, but there's some critical things about it. Um, and there's also a series of questions that we're going to make available that you can get at www.peeradvisoryboard.com forward slash interview. And you'll see that at the end of the show as well. Okay. Well, I don't know if I fully concur that the interview format is different today. I think that the aspect is, is that in today's marketplace. Oh, contrary one. Okay, well, we'll come back to that. <laughs> uh, but I think in today's marketplace, the, the demand for people is so great. And therefore, it's really a shopper's market, not a buyer's market. For the higher Very true. Market. And Very therefore, true. the interview process is a, the hiring process says to be a lot faster, which means you have to be a better interviewer. And my experience or knowledge of small business owners is they don't know how to interview, whether it be old or new. Right. And, uh, and today it's even more important because if you make an error, you know, it's, it can be an expensive error. Right. Well, a couple of things you mentioned already. One, um, the, the speed of which you need to hire. You know, you've mentioned before in conversations we've had that, um, you know, if you go through the old interview process, where you have the initial interview, then you have a call back, and then you've got a group meeting, and so on. So, you know, after that first interview, by the time you get around to the second one, that candidate could be gone. No, not could. They are gone. Okay. So in today's marketplace, you really have to make a decision very quickly because it's, as I said, it's a, it's really a, a shopper's market. They're looking for positions, and there are a lot of positions out there. And if they're good, they're going to be gone very quickly. So you have to make a decision really after the first interview. And the question is, how do you create an interview that gives you information? You're taking the words out of my mouth. And also is a selling tool for them to want to be work with you. Right. Oh, mm. that's exciting. It is. And uh, breaking the action. Oh, man. Okay, we're going to start over. Hey, and welcome to another episode of Exciting, huh? Already of uh, BizBuzz with Ray and Zen, sponsored by Two Small Biz Guys and Pro Peer Advisory Boards, right? Yeah. Um, I hear we're going to have a, a very good discussion about interviews today. That's right. You're not going to interview you, and you're going to interview me. Oh, boy, that, that sounds okay. interviewish. Yeah, well, that's true. But why are we going to be talking about interviews? Well, from what I understand, today it's imperative that a small business owner know how to interview well because, number one, the it's a seller's market for uh, individuals, for employees. And if you don't interview them quickly enough and effectively enough and make a decision, they're going to be gone. That's true. But the other aspect is, is that since the time is compressed, uh, it becomes more difficult for them to make a good decision. And that's where I think the key to interviewing helps you make a better decision. And also, as I mentioned, uh, small business owners really have never been trained in interviewing. Normally, when they have, when they lose an employee, you have to hire an employee to them and say, oh, God, I really don't want to do this. Right. So my attitude has always been, when I have my companies, uh, is that whenever I have to hire somebody, oh, this is a great opportunity to improve the skill set in our organization. Sure. So I think you first need that. And the second aspect is you need to be able to you know, reduce your potential loss by improving your interview. So the aspect is, is that... Or truncate the, the contract schedule. You know, you mentioned the other day that of an individual, one of your peer groups that was making a decision to hire an engineer, I think it was, for 120 grand a year. 
and one and not really wanting to do that even though his revenue would support it but at the same time there's you know you're risking that hundred and twenty thousand dollar risk or you give them 90 days and figure out whether they're a good fit or not so you're only risking the okay well that's, 30, that's, well, that's a different aspect that, that's the aspect is uh, we need people do I want to hire people and we need somebody so you have two aspects there one aspect is if you don't hire them what is the downside to you because there's a cost that way mm -hmm. and you heard me give the example that if you have a restaurant you have five waiters you need six pretty soon you only need four so if you can't get the proper service or get the product out on time well, you're going to lose business and it costs right. you indirectly but you don't really see that cost as easily the other aspect is is if you need somebody in like the one hundred twenty thousand dollar a year example you think oh my god that's such a large salary but i think you have to think about it in smaller terms as to okay maybe this might be a fifteen to thirty thousand dollar risk because at that point they're either paying for themselves you're going to know pretty quick. Or, or you're going to know yeah. pretty quick if they're really going to make a contribution to your firm or you want to keep them. So you have to think about these things in that respect. But it's still in the interview process. You want to make sure that you have a better hire. Well, we, you know, you talk about the 12-week the year. That's an aspect that, you know, you could have your metrics in place to measure the, the activities and the results in that amount of time and decide whether, yeah, this is working or no, it's not. And to need to start over. Okay, well, I would agree. <clears throat> okay, first of all, I believe it should really, depending on the position, you really want to measure the first week, 30 days, 60 days, and what you're looking at is the habits. By habits, I'm talking about the activities. Are they really doing what they should be doing? And if they don't have, if they don't have the right habits or culture or values for the organization, you have to make a separation of them. Because so this is where the management by walking around fits yeah. in very yeah. well. BWA. Right. Okay, well, we were talking about interview, and one of the things I don't know if you mentioned that because I have a short memory is and we that, talk so much. At, at the end of this, at the end of this little blog, do you have you can go to what do they go to? They got our interview questions. The interview questions are going to be at www.peeradvisoryboard.com forward slash interview. So if you want to get a list of interview <clears throat> questions, some of which we'll talk about today. But if you want to get the whole list, I think we have 24, 25 questions in the list. You'll find it very helpful for you in future interviews. And it was it was interesting way back when I did have interview uh, training from mm -hmm. about, and they had my key people all. That was amazing. You told me you took three days of training, right? right? And that's unheard of today. Well, because I because I thought it was very important. Okay, I felt my my role as head of the business was sure. twofold. One was strategy, and the other was make sure we had the best people. Because people make the business the, the two priorities that everyone should have. So in order to make sure we have the best people in the out of the box, is you have to have I thought you had to improve your interview skills to right. know what was going on. I also found it was very interesting from learning how to do these interviewing. I found that I basically was selling the, the prospects on our company because it was such they felt I've shown so much interest in them mm -hmm. and the questions. Well, the interview process, you're really selling each other, right? Yeah, right. Well, okay. Uh, the aspect is that most people start off, a lot of companies start off the interview, and they talk, they're telling them about the company. Now, today with the internet, people know about the business when they meet you. They better. They better. But the aspect is people still feel they want to sell them about the company. Now, my feeling is, is that uh, in an interview, I will start off and say, you know, Zen, I'll be happy to answer whatever questions you want to know about the company or about the position. But first, I want to learn about you. So what I really try to do is I try to prevent biasing the candidate. So they give me answers that are going to feed into what they think I want to hear. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to answer their questions early. And I don't want to talk too much about the company early. I want to learn about them. So, And that's the most important, you know, aspect of an interview is you want to know who is sitting across the table or the desk from you, um, what their thoughts are, how they think, uh, how they handle situations, you know, when you present uh, role modeling situations yeah. and what they would do um, in certain stressful environments or even non-stressful. Okay, so let me, an idea of how they are. Well, for example, let me just give you one question. Okay, okay. just one. 
How can you? I doubt that. All right, well, we'll just jump one. Okay. What would your past employers count on you for without fail? In other words, what do they think that you can do without fail? So when you ask that question, how do they trust you? Okay, how do they trust you? What do you think you can do? Yeah. But the most important question is not that question. The most important question is the second and third and fourth questions. So when you answer that question, well, they call on me because they think I can make a quality product. They call on me because they, they know I can do a good sales presentation. Well, why do they think you make a good sales presentation? Uh, why do you, what, what is your belief on making the product? Why do you believe that? How do you feel that way? Where and do you, you come see from? quality? Where, you know, what are the aspects? And you get involved in how, where, what right. aspects. And you, <clears throat> so really one question is really nothing more than opening the gates to asking the second, the third, and fourth question. Now these interviews take time. Sure. So if you say, well, I'm going to give a candidate. Now it also depends upon the level of the skill set you're looking for. But when I was looking for a higher level of skill set, an interview could take you know, two to three hours. Mm -hmm. If I'm looking for a lower level skill set, you know, for different positions, I, mostly I didn't view those, but they would take maybe an hour. But the, because you, when you get involved in the second and third question is where it takes the time. Sure. And those <clears throat> the questions that you ask, every one of them is going to have an answer, but you've got to be able to ask the right questions in order to draw out the information right. that you need to fill in the rest of the story. Okay, so let me just give you another question. Okay, okay. see? Maybe, maybe, maybe that's what you might want to answer. <clears throat> okay. Tell me about a time when you'd rather than follow instructions when you go take a task and do it your own way. What happened? No. Mm. Okay, it's interesting because if you have an organization that is very process driven and a person wants to do it a different way. Manufacturing. Manufacturing. Uh, do they do it? Are you allowing them to do it? Uh, today, there's a, a theories out there that you want to hire uh, people who are independent, who think a little bit differently, who are willing innovation. to in the innovation. Innovation. Uh, heretics is what they call it. <laughs> so, but innovation. So the right. aspect is, okay, if you're, if you're company. So this kind of goes with the culture of the, of the organization. So you want to drive down to what is their belief in culture? What are their values? And then you have to start off, you have to have a, a matching of values. Otherwise, they're not going to be with you. Long. Right. But then you want them to feel that they're going to be comfortable in the culture. Uh, the other thing which we are starting to talk about recently is that in order to attract candidates, you also have to talk about kind of passion. In other words, if... Uh, What's your vision and mission and how they might fit into that? And what are your community goals? What are... Right. And how are you integrating with the, the bigger picture in a positive or constructive way? Right, right on. The, the other thing is with uh, people who are younger, and this kind of goes back to uh, older generations, you, people are also looking to say, what, what skill sets I can learn from you that are going to give me opportunity in the future? Mm -hmm. Now, you find that some co companies, they say, well, I don't want to have someone. I'm not going to hire someone who's going to move along. Well, my attitude on moving along is whether you create the environment for them to want to stay. Right. And if you if you create the environment, they'll, they'll, they'll stay. The other aspect is if you can give them skill sets to want to be with you, that's also a reason for them to want to join you. And if people are willing and, and or wanting to learn, to educate themselves, you know, personal professional growth, uh, and additional education, uh, they're huge today because things are changing at such rapid pace that you got to keep up. Yeah. Or you get, you know, you fall behind and you lose business. Okay, the other thing which was interesting back when is that the at the end of the first interview, this is when you have time to do a second, maybe a third interview. At the end of the first interview, the question was asked, then at the next meeting, please bring in 10 questions. And when I answer those 10 questions, you either accept or reject a position. Okay, what I was looking for in those 10 questions was not the questions so much, but what was the weighting of the questions? How many questions had to do with compensation, vacation, you know, benefits? And how many questions had to do with opportunity, how would I fit in the organization, the culture of the organization, the value of the organization? 
Mm -hmm. So you, you're taking a look. It's another way to see how this person is weighting the position in their mind. Now, with today's rapid pace environment and the online applications and the rarely hearing a word back from the submissions that you've made, how would you or would you see that those uh, questions for the for the potential employee to ask, would you see them being included as part of the online application process or as a, um, a follow-up email um, to the application? Well, today I think you... Now there you get into structure and details and, you know, backside programming would be able to do that. A lot of companies just don't take that kind of time. Yeah, today is what you might, hit, you might do is you might say, okay, at the uh, you might say, well, I'd like to continue the interview. But first, I'd like to give you sit down and write out a few questions that you want to answer. Mm -hmm. And then we'll continue. So take 15, 20 minutes, and then we'll get together again. So I don't want to let them out of the office. I want to be like he used car salesman. Okay, so speak I, 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 I want to keep the better close of sale if I think they're really good. Right. So speaking of in the office, with the advantages of video and video conferencing today, whatever platform you might use, is, is, um, is it as important to have them in the office or do you think the video aspect of the interview process is applicable or, I or, think, I or has value? I think, well, okay. I think it depends upon where they are. If they're local, I think you run them in the office. If they're not local, I think you do videos probably fine. Because mm -hmm. uh, body language tells you a lot. Now, right. you, can, you can see a lot by body language or eyes and so forth uh, on video. Oh, yeah, you can, but, there's micro expressions that, that everybody but what I think, But I think the aspect is if you really are looking for good people, I think part of the aspect is selling them on the concept and creating a, you create a relationship far easier by personally meeting than you do by the video. I mean, it takes a while through video. So the aspect is if you're a relationship type person, I think you'd want to use it for a personal meeting. Mm -hmm. um, today, it's, you know, with a lot of the millennials like technology, right. they may be more comfortable with it. So yeah, you walk into a room full of millennials and nobody's looking at each other. They're all on their phones. Yeah, that could be. Let me give you one more question because we, we don't want to take this too okay. long. This was a question which came up, and I, it was out on my list, but I think it's a very interesting one. Uh, why is this job important to you? Is the final question. And that was suggested in a person who wrote a book about you know, uh, talent magnets and how you look for top talent. Mm -hmm. And that question never really occurred to me as to why is this job important? Well, it's an open-ended question that could go a lot of different directions, yeah. and that will give you a good indication of how your potential employee is thinking about it right as well so if you want to get our list of questions you where do they go is that you go to www.peeradvisoryboard.com forward slash interview hey thanks for watching two small biz guys biz buzz brought to you by pro peer advisory board Stay tuned for more exciting small business discussions in future episodes. And don't forget your free download of Ray's Crypt Notes for this show. See you next time.